We're in the TechCrunch studio today with Glenn Solomon, who's a partner at GGV Capital. Glenn, welcome to the studio. Thanks for having me. So Q4 here on Sand Hill Road, uh, end of 2012. What, you know, as a growth stage venture investor, 30,000 foot view of the market, what's going on right now? Mm. It's an interesting time to be in the growth stage in, in the venture industry. Um, right now, there are more companies doing well than I can remember in my 16 year career doing this. So we have a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of top of the funnel opportunity for us. Um, coupled with that, however, there's a lot of capital and some of that capital is pretty concentrated in you know, not a huge number of, of hands. And so we're seeing rounds getting larger, valuations going up. And so it's a, it's a bit of an embarrassment of riches right now. Lots of great companies, but also lots of funding looking at those companies. So pretty, pretty uh, uh, competitive landscape right now. Mm -hmm. But um, better to have this type of situation, I think, than a, than a situation where there are less good companies looking for funding. So as a, as a growth stage investor, you guys are looking to invest at like the Series C, D level? Or could it be earlier than that? Mm. Yeah, what we say about our business, we call ourselves expansion stage. Okay. And our uh, funds, uh, we, we announced recently raising about $625 million, uh, And that's similar to our last size fund, which is about 610 And so what we're looking to do is invest five to $25 million into companies. Um, and, and, and I mention that because that puts us in, a, in the, the range of looking for companies that you typically think of as like a Series B, Series C, Series D type company. Got it. What we don't do, uh, we don't invest in companies that are still in product development and haven't yet launched and generated uh, some customer traction and some revenue. And do you see also in, the, in that sort of five to $25 million uh, sort of investment range, are you seeing more traditional firms and also larger private mm. funds sort of coming in and what's, like how do you view 2013 in that kind of landscape? Yeah, good question. So it's been a, a segment of the market that's, that's worked recently. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk about some of the deals that have worked and there are some that, that haven't worked. Mm -hmm. But in general, I think the feeling is this is a segment that's been working. In other words, people have been making money and there have been some high profile deals that have worked well. When that happens, and I've seen this before in my career, capital tends to flood into the industry mm -hmm. and so we're seeing uh, traditional early stage players go multi-stage. So just to be clear, you mean capital coming into this stage? This segment, yes, okay, the, right. the, the growth stage segment right. of the market. Yes, so you, now you've been doing growth stage investing for a really, really long time. So for the audience, I think it would be helpful to say like, you know, how does GGV position itself as a growth stage investor? Sure. So uh, what we try to do, we try to focus as a firm on growth stage uh, and, and what we call expansion again exclusively. Yeah. That differentiates us from, from several players who dabble in this space but also do, for example, early stage. Uh, there are even some private equity firms that from time to time come into this business. This is the only thing we do and we think for entrepreneurs that's helpful to know because when times are tough, this is our core business and we're going to stay with it. Uh, so that, that's one way we try to differentiate. As a firm, we have a couple unique attributes. Half my partners are here in the U.S., the other half's in China. And since our founding in 2000, we've been around now 12 and a half years, our business, we've been in China since day one. So that, that made us an early player in China. So you, were, you, were, you had partners in China from, from formation? We had a presence in China from formation. Okay. Um, if I look at the way our China business has evolved and really how China venture capital has evolved, phase one we call the flyover model. Uh, and, and that's where most firms had, who were participating would, would have people yeah. flying in from Sand Hill Road or other U.S. locations sure. and sort of do deals and then fly out. And some of that's still going on, right? Some of that does still go on. Our model, though, increasingly has gotten more and more local. So we had feet on the street very early, not quite at our inception, but we had some folks in Singapore. We moved them into China in early, like 2002, 2003 timeframe. And since then, we've hired Chinese locals to be on our team. So, so we're very local in the market, which we think is important in China. It's, it seemed like from, just to focus on China for a minute, it seemed like, let's say a decade ago or so, that it was kind of faddish, right, to put, uh, have a presence or have put money to work in BRICS markets, let's say. Um, but you guys stuck it out, right? And sort of, it seems like you've doubled down there. What have you guys learned over the last 10 years that, that maybe people around here, we, we don't, we aren't exposed to? Well, it, it, I think it's, it's fair to say that when we first got into China, it was not a place it, where, where money was, was, was flooding in. Mm -hmm. 
we were fortunate enough to invest in Alibaba early in, in, in uh, life at GGV. That deal obviously worked out very, very well for us. And that deal and a few others, uh, Baidu and a few others, uh, really encouraged capital flow into the market. Um, and so I don't want to call it hot money, but it was money looking for a home. And China looked like an interesting place. More recently, China uh, has had its troubles. And mm -hmm. there's lots of talk in the US about the macroeconomic challenges in China. You don't have to, you know, the, clearly the, the, uh, a big part of, of um, politics these days talks about, you know, China and, 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 and China bashing is, is sort of in, in fashion in Washington, D.C. these days. But at the end of the day, we're committed to that market. So while others are getting out, uh, the money that was perhaps less committed, we are very committed to that market. And we're going to be there for a long period of time. Yeah, I remember actually maybe six or seven months ago, the Instagram founders, I think, were interested in going over uh, to China to just kind of explore and mm -hmm. see, and this is before acquisition, right? Um, to see how they may expand. Be curious to know like what you guys have learned, GGV as a partnership, both in China and sort of crossing over into mobile as well. Because yeah. um, if you look back, right, like Google went in there, had to close their office. Facebook, I think Mark Zuckerberg, I went to a conference two years ago where he said he spends about 20% of his time just thinking about how to grow Facebook in China, right? Mm -hmm. um, this story of Kevin going to China. I mean, yes. how do you guys think about mobile there? So we're really excited about mobile. Mm -hmm. You know, first, a couple of numbers. Uh, I just read recently that the billion, we're now over a billion uh, mobile devices, smart mobile devices that have been uh, 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 initiated, uh, accounts have been initiated with globally. Half of those are in China. Uh, so the market in, in China for mobile is huge. And it is a ubiquitous platform. iOS is there, Android's there, and so uh, Microsoft is there. So the ability for companies like an Instagram to start thinking about China is really, that opportunity is now open. And you're seeing companies uh, that, are, that are making hay in China that, that maybe started, born mobile companies, but started in the US and have, have done well in China. Um, uh, um, Evernote is a good example of a company that mm. is doing quite nicely in China. Uh, Flurry is a company that has a lot of activity going on in China. Um, uh, Appcelerator, uh, the mobile platform company, talks of uh, a very large percentage of devel development going on, their platform going on in China. So we are seeing companies that fluidity across market with mobile is really, is really opened. And so as a firm, we're, we're eager to uh, um, invest against that trend. And we're seeing more and more entrepreneurs yeah. Recognize that as a big opportunity. Let's talk to you. Like when, when a founder reaches out to you, let's say Silicon Valley based or US or European based founder comes to you, and let's say they're at that expansion stage, how do they come to you and how do they think about, from their point of view, what are they looking at you for and what are they looking at China um, as an opportunity today, like mm -hmm. beyond the hype of the size of the market and everything like that? Well, there's a couple, couple things. Um, size of market is the ultimate attractor, right? And so okay. on, entrepreneurs are looking to get to big markets. Um, I think the, the savvy entrepreneurs are recognizing that, hey, if I don't get to that market soon, you know, an Instagram perfect example, right? Yeah. They were making terrific progress in the U.S. And they probably recognized if we don't get to China soon, there will be an Instagram knockoff that will end up the market leader and we won't have that chance. Mm -hmm. So savvy entrepreneurs are starting to recognize that. Um, and so that, that's, that's point one. They come to us and say, look, we need to figure out, we, we can't dilly-dally. We've got to get to China. We've got we to execute well. So we know we're going to need to hire a local team. Do we need to hire or attract some local partner? Do we need licenses to operate over there because the rules are a bit different? Um, so there's, there's lots of questions and uh, hurdles to overcome. And having somebody with feet on the street and an experience in China is helpful. And that, that's where we're seeing the most uh, the ability then, to add the most value. And then maybe as a, as a final piece of this conversation, if you could share like a vignette or a story about how you guys um, you work in China. I mean, it, it's are you guys going over there a lot? Are there certain companies that you're spending a lot of time with that you can disclose and sort of share with other people about your sort of style and engagement, um, you know, here and in China? Sure, sure. So um, there's a lot of overhead to operate the way we we we, we operate. Um, GGV, we are unique. There are a lot of firms with a China presence, but most of those firms have separate funds with separate teams right. in China and in other other markets. The way we operate is we're all one team. So I've got six partners with me in this most recent fund. Three of them are in China, three here in the US. Mm. Um, and we are uh, completely focused on working together 
and we're all investing out of the same pool of funds, and so we have we have a, a you know a lot of reason. It's an to, integrated to, model. It's an integrated <laughs> model, yeah. and so. Uh, to give you an example of what my life is like as a result of that, yeah. I've been to China 28 times in my seven years. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, my seven years at GGV. Wow. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, we'll be on a board call uh, late into the, the evening tomorrow night. I'm oftentimes over there for board meetings, uh, and that's part of the reason why my, my trips are so frequent. Um, uh, so it, it's sort of, we call it our second shift here in the U.S. Yeah. You know, we kind of shut down. Uh, you know, either have an event or, you know, spend a little family time in the evening and then, you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night, oftentimes we're on the phone with entrepreneurs wow. or our partners looking at and talking about other companies in our portfolio or, or, or new opportunities. Um, so, so, so life is, is a bit more hectic, but we think the upside from that integration is, is really high. Um, and like I said, we're seeing more and more companies come to us and care more about the fact that we can help them Cross that, you know, cross the, the, the Pacific Ocean either from China to the U.S. or vice versa from the U.S. to China. Some of our uh, companies in China that are doing quite well um, in China are thinking strongly about the U.S. and are setting up shop in the U.S. One of those is UC Web, hmm. which is the leading uh, mobile browser company in China. Okay. Uh, they're uh, uh, they're the market leader in in China. 200 million uh, daily active users in China. Huge numbers. They've uh, recently opened in India, are number two in that market already and growing fast. Brazil and the U.S. are their next markets. So we're, we're part of their expansion strategy here and are helping them get going in the U.S. Great. Well, Glenn, thanks for coming in. Sounds like you're long on China, and we'll be watching. Thanks. Appreciate right. you having me. Thanks.